Hi and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a modular signpost where you can even change out the signs. So sit tight, I'm going to show you step by step how to make this lovely little fellow and I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you later. Bye! The signpost itself is mainly built using the foam core and the coffee stir sticks. So what you want to do is first start out with a piece of foam core that's about two inches in length. Now keep in mind this is something you can vary depending on how tall you want your signpost to be. So really two inches is sort of the arbitrary measurement I'm using in this video. One thing you want to be sure of is that after you've cut this foam core down to the size you need it to be, you do want to leave a little space at the top that is the width of one of the coffee stir sticks. That's important. The next thing you're going to do is hot glue a coffee stir stick onto the foam core, leaving it below that section where you've marked off the width of a previous coffee stir stick. When the glue has hardened, you want to make sure you trim off the excess end, level with the edge of your foam core where you didn't leave the mark. Basically what you're going to then do is trim off the excess foam core from around the coffee stir stick that you've just applied onto the foam core. Then you're going to place on either side of that section two more coffee stir sticks. Again, trim off the edges as you did with the first one, but leave that space of the foam core up at the top. Now with the three sides framed out, what you're going to do is remove any excess foam core so that it is level with the coffee stir sticks on either side. You basically want to leave this one side exposed and make sure to leave that little bit at the top. You don't want to lose that because it is important to the build. Now we're going to start creating the arm for the side itself. The first thing you need to do is measure out a piece of foam core that is an inch in length and then you're going to stick a coffee stir stick on top of it and trim away any excess on either side of the coffee stir stick like we've done before with the post. Moving on, what you're then going to do is take a, another coffee stir stick and instead of hot gluing it right away, you just want to make sure you're trimming away the excess foam core underneath the original coffee stir stick because it's going to be difficult to try and do this once it is attached to the post. Once you've removed that excess bit of foam core, what you are then going to do is take this coffee stir stick with that inch of foam core underneath and you're going to attach this to the top portion of the post using your hot glue gun. When that glue has cooled, you are then going to trim away any excess coffee stir stick that's sticking up out of the top of this post. And like before with the main post, you're going to frame out either side of this arm using the coffee stir stick, same method. Glue on with hot glue gun, trim off excess, flip over, do the other side. And the only exposed part you should have now is the back portion of this post. At this point, what I do recommend doing is taking some time to make sure you file any rough edges or uneven edges just to get everything smoothed out and a little bit more level with each other. Once you've done that, you can then move on to placing this last bit of coffee stir stick on the last portion of the length of the exposed post. So same thing, put some hot glue onto that coffee stir stick stick it onto the foam core, let it cool, trim off that excess length and again on those edges you can take your file and smooth things out again. Now to give the arm some support you are going to take a coffee stir stick cut off a measurement of two centimeters and then what you're going to do is with your hot glue gun attach this piece to the arm and the main post so that you get this support beam going to keep it from bowing too much and this is something that where it does help having it on the cutting mat because you can help keep that right angle a little bit better once that has taken and the glue has hardened you want to be sure that you put a little bit of extra hot glue up against the portion where there is still the exposed foam core i found that just sort of reinforces it a little bit better the last thing you're going to do now is just cap off that little bit of exposed foam core that's at the tip of the arm and this is how your post is going to end up looking with the coffee stir sticks and the foam core minus the hooks because i'm going to show you how to do that in a minute to get the post on the base, it's actually very easy. Take that clear strip of clear plastic, and then what you're gonna do is put a very healthy daub of the hot glue onto one side of the plastic. Stick the post into that glob, let it cool when that has cooled. You are then going to take the gravel and sand mixture, and with some Elmer's glue or clear or white glue, you can put that around the base as well to get these to adhere to the base and around the post. Let it dry completely and now we're going to move on to how the signs themselves are made. 
The images that I'm using in this video were created by my friend Georgie Chase and it's something where I wanted to showcase them because they really do make great signs. So if you want to check out his work, do make sure to get over to The Last Laugh Crafts and Miniatures on Facebook. He's got some really great stuff there, so the link is down below in the description for you. Let's get talking about how to make these signs, however. What you want to do is find the image you wish to turn into a sign and you're going to have to scale down two copies of that image to the size you need. Keep in mind when it comes time to print these out, depending on the quality of your printer is going to depend on the quality of what this image is going to look like when it is printed out scaled down. Really, unless you're sitting there with a magnifying glass, it doesn't matter in the long run. Remember, you've got that three foot rule going on the table. But the point is to get it scaled down to the size you need, and then you're going to take one copy of that image, take your glue stick, and you're going to take the glue, and you're going to put it onto the pizza cardboard, and you're going to place one of the images onto the glue. The important thing to remember here is that you want the corrugation in the pizza box to run on the vertical, because this is where we're going to insert the hooks for the sign. When it's dried, you can then take your utility knife and carefully trim out the image on the cardboard. And then taking the second image, you are going to glue that onto the other side. Allow that to dry completely before we move on. And again, just be sure that you have put this on the vertical because you need those spaces in the corrugation for your hooks. What you're gonna do is take those eyelet lengths of jewelry pieces, and you're actually gonna cut off a good length of that excess wire. You basically just wanna have this about a centimeter overall in length before you stick these into the corrugation of the cardboard. Do be sure to place hooks into cardboard first before attaching them with hot glue. Once the glue has cooled, you will then be ready to use your signs. A little note about the signs here, to make sure everything is of the same size and interchangeable, you wanna make sure your signs are all the same size. So make note of what you have scaled it down to with your images to make it easier for you in the long run if you go to make more signs in the future. Also be sure to seal your signs with a very thin coat of matte Mod Podge on both sides and edges of signs. Taking one of your completed signs, you're going to, on the exposed foam core of the arm of the post, mark off where these hooks are on the sign. Now that you have that marked, what you're gonna do is take the excess wire and create two hooks that are gonna be placed where you have put those markings. You will need to be sure that these hook lengths are trimmed down because if you use what's left on the excess wire, your sign may as well be on the ground. This I'm gonna leave up to you as to how low you want your sign to hang, but do make sure you trim away. To attach these hooks, all you need to do is just put, again, some hot glue over each of those markings. Insert your hook. Be sure your hooks are facing in the same direction when you go to glue them in, and allow the glue to cool completely before trying to hang your sign on these hooks to make sure everything's in order. The first thing you want to do is seal everything up using this mixture that I have here for you, the two parts Mod Podge to one part black and dark brown acrylic paint. Paint the post, paint the sand and the stones, but do not paint the plastic base. When that coat has dried, you're going to paint chocolate bar onto the post section and graphite gray onto the stone and sand section. Let that dry completely. Now you're going to dry brush with just basic brown on the post and granite gray on the stones. Link above shows you a dry brushing technique to help you out if you're not familiar with it. Now for finishing touches after that's dried, you're going to take the olive green and just dab it in between the larger stones onto the gravel area so it looks like there's moss growing between the stones. When you finish doing that, you're going to move on to taking the coffee latte color and just doing one last coating of a very light dry brush onto the post itself. Then take your matte Mod Podge and put a layer of that onto your clear plastic just to dull down the shininess of the plastic. And here we have our final look for this project. I really do like how these signs are interchangeable. You can give the post a completely different use because of the sign that's on it. The other thing is that the clear plastic base allows you to place this on any type of terrain and it is going to blend in nicely. So again, just be sure that you make a point of making your signs about the same size so it's easy to interchange these. The cool thing is, is that the signs also swing because of the way they're interchangeable. And it's just a really neat way to add that extra touch of something onto your terrain. I hope you found this to be a helpful video. If you have any questions, please, by all means, comment below, or you can email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. While you're here, if you've liked the video, make sure you hit the like button, and you're welcome to subscribe as well. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll have more for you in the near future. Thanks so much, and have a great one.
Um, what is this? What, what am I? Signpost, signpost, signpost. Signpost, take one. Ooh. I think that was a one shot. Watch, it took me five, five minutes to film the intro, maybe. 15 to do all those. Shut up. Well, hello, Dolly. Yes, hello, Dolly. It's so nice to be back home where I belong. You're looking swell. Someone, person, thing, place, time. So long, farewell, oh, feather say no adieu, 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 to you and you and you. Where are you going? Bye. Now what? Ha 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 ha. Sound checks when you have Broadway songs stuck in your head. 